So this learning area is designed to provide a general background to understanding the earth science and also the biology. It presents the history of the earth through geologic time. And also we discuss about the earth structure, the composition, and the process of the issue concern and the problems and pertaining the natural hazard are also included in our topic. And also uh, deals with the basic principle and processes in the study of biology. It covers the life processes and interaction at the cellular organism in population. And also part then in the second quarter will be the ecosystem level. So in our first quarter class, it's all about the earth science. And on the second part will be the life sciences. So let's go to the universe. Universe, it's all matter, including Earth, galaxy, and intergalactic space. So did you know, class, the understanding of the origin and evolution of a structure and fate of the universe, it's called cosmology. Again, cosmology is the study of the universe. So let's start about uh, the formation of the universe. There is a lot of theories. We have here the Big Bang Theory. When you see Big Bang Theory class, it's the prevailing cosmological model for the early development of the universe. Perceived as the massive explosion around, we have a 13.7 or 13.8 billion years ago. That is the age of universe. After the explosion that's surrounding where at high temperature of about 10 billion Fahrenheit, we have also happening the aggregates of fundamental particles such as the neutron, electron, and the proton. Next, this is the picture of happening of the Big Bang theory, that there is an aggregation of the neutron, proton, and the electron, and in the, in the present day, that having a, the universe and the galaxy. So we have here the oscillating universe theory. When we say oscillating universe theory class, this is the state of the universe that continues to expand and to collapse. It means that the galaxy started to be moving away from each other. However, after they reach a certain distance, there is another one collapse and expand. It means the oscillating universe theory. It is the cycle of theory. If there is another collapse and expand and then from a certain distance, there is another collapse and expand. When we say class steady state theory, steady state theory class according to Sir James Jean, Fred Hoyle, revised by Herman Bondi and Thomas Gold, the alternative to the BBT, they state that the universe is always expanding in a constant and an average density. So the matter is continuously created to form a cosmic and celestial body. It means the steady state class Okay. It's always been the same since the beginning, never been changed. It's still expanding, but okay, constant the average of the density. Next one, this one is the uh, formation of the solar system. When we say um, formation of the solar system, there is a theory named nebular hypothesis or nebular theory. There is started a huge cloud of gas, which mostly composed of hydrogen and helium gases. So here is the step of the nebular theory glass. They're starting with collapse. Okay, comes from the high temperature of gas of ball, and then they're spinning. So this is spinning faster and faster so that no part of the disk that was thrown out, and then the temperature decreased while decreasing. Okay, the flattening, the flattening become a sphere of due to rotation. And then after flattening glass, the condensation. So some of fog from the core of the largest mass is the middle with uh, the small part around are cooling. So the small mass is glass, it's form a planet, while the high temperature is called the sun. Next one class, this theory class state that the God, the Supreme Being, created the whole universe. So the proof can be read in the Holy Bible stipulating that God created the heavens and the earth, including the man. So that is the all the theory that we uh, part in our um, discussion. But now I insert also the parts of the 
solar system that we have the inner planet, okay? The inner planet and the outer planet. When we see inner planet, plus it's a part of the solar system, we have the Mercury, the Venus, Earth, and Mars. So all of them are made mostly of rock and metal. They are very heavy. They move slowly in space. They have no rings and a few moons. And the outer planet, naman class, that is the Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and also a Pluto. So the characteristic of the gas giant or the outer planet, they are made mostly of gases. They are very light for their size and automatic. They have a lot of rings and many moons. So that is the Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and the Neptune. So the Pluto was observed to belong to a different region class. Okay? Or um, tinatawag na siyang the dwarf planet. According to International Astronomical Union class, the Pluto, instead of a being a nine planet of the solar system, it's called the dwarf planet. Let's move to the next topic, the Earth as a system. System class is a set of interconnected components that are interacting to form a unified pool. Example class, in the ecosystem. So um, the organisms are interrelated and there is an interaction happening. So that is example, a water cycle because there is a interacting. The Earth system is essentially a closed system. So a closed system class is a which uh, there is only exchange of heat or energy but no exchange of matter. The Earth receives an energy from the sun and return some of this energy on this space. So here are the class, the component of the subsystem of the Earth system. We have here the four spheres of the Earth. We have the biosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere, and the atmosphere. When we say the geosphere class, geosphere, it makes up the solid rock of the earth. It can be divided into layers based on the chemical or the physical properties. It also part the three layers of our earth. We have the crust, mantle, and core. When we say crust, it is the outermost layer, the mantle, the hot layer, the between of the crust and the core. When we say core class, okay, this is the center that made of iron and also nickel. So we also have the physical layers class, the lithosphere, the cold, brittle, outermost layer. We have also the asthenosphere, that is the solid, plastic-like layer upon which the tectonic plate move. We also have the mesosphere, the lower or the solid layer of the mantle. And the last one, the core. Ang ating core class, we have the outer core and the inner core. When we say outer core class, that is are made of a liquid iron and nickel. But then when we say inner core, that is the made of solid iron and nickel. Again, the geosphere class, it's the solid part of the earth from the core to the surface. So include the volcanoes, the rocks, the mineral, coal, and oil on all the land forms on our surface. So mineral resources are mined from the geosphere. Let's go to the next sphere, that is the biosphere. When we say biosphere class, biosphere, it's a made of a living organism and also include the area of Earth where the life can be found. So the biosphere contains a variety of factors that certain plants and animals that need in order to survive. So energy enter the biosphere through the sunlight. This form of the energy to start in the plant, it's called photosynthesis. So this energy is uh, then passed on to the organism that eat this plant. So the energy can also be transferred to organism that eat each other. Example, the polar bear cannot live in the Sahara Desert. So again, when we say biosphere glass, it includes all the life forms on our planet Earth. It covers all the ecosystem from the soil to the rainforest, 
from the mangroves to the coral reefs and from the plankton reefs from ocean surface to the deep sea. So that is the biosphere. When we say hydrosphere, hydrosphere is the dynamic mass of water that is continuously on the move. It's about 70% of the Earth is covered with liquid water and much of it's in the form of ocean water. Only the 3% of Earth water is a fresh water. So the two-thirds are in form in ice and then the remaining one-third, that is the present of the stream, lake, groundwater. And also the part of the hydrosphere is the hydrologic or the water cycle. That is the precipitation, evaporation, runoff, infiltration, and many more. So this is the sample of hydrologic cycle, one of the subcomponents of the hydrosphere. So this is the condensation, precipitation, evaporation, transpiration, infiltration, surface, and runoff. So again, the subcomponent of the hydrosphere are connected via hydrologic cycle. So the last peer class, we already discussed the biosphere and the geosphere and the hydrosphere. The last one is the atmosphere. When we say atmosphere is the mixture of invisible gases that surround the Earth, it's made up of 78% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen, 0.9% of argon, and 0.03% of carbon dioxide. There are four main layers to the atmosphere, or we have also five layers. Okay, include ko na pati yung exosphere class. We have the atmosphere, the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. And we have the fifth layer of the atmosphere, that is the exosphere. So, the atmosphere is the heated through the process known as a convection. Convection is the movement of heat. Through matter, in the atmosphere, this matter is in the form of air. It is where the cold air sinks and the warm air rises. So, again, plus the layers of the atmosphere, we have a fifth or five layer of the atmosphere. We have the troposphere, where the hot air balloon, where the weather occurs in the troposphere. When we say stratosphere, glass, when we say stratosphere, that is the uh, where the sunlight, okay, protecting from the sunlight because of the ultraviolet rays. And in the mesosphere glass, it's the coldest layer of the atmosphere where the meteors burn. And in the fourth layer of the atmosphere, we have the thermosphere. And the last layer will be the exosphere. So the exosphere, it's the boundary between the universe and the Earth. So that is the layer of the Earth atmosphere. So how do these subsystems interact? This is the sample class. For example, there is a dam. So by the dam, okay, the human, that is the biosphere, they build a dam out of the rock material. So that is the part of the geosphere. Water in the lake, okay, that is the hydrosphere, sip into the cliff wall behind the dam, then becoming a groundwater or evaporating into the air. So there is a geosphere and atmosphere again. And then the human harness the energy from the water and the hydrosphere, okay, that also part of the hydrosphere, by having its spin and turbines to produce electricity. Okay, so this is the uh, interaction of subsystem, but there is a lot of more of interaction of subsystem.